Hey, how's it going? This is Chad Haig reporting from Southern India. I'd like to continue this series of videos in our Missing Link News show in which we react to the headlines of the day, but with that crucial element restored, which might allow you to really understand what is going on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've probably already heard what has been going on in the United States for some time now, as it's like uh, coming up on two weeks now that uh, the highest ranked universities in the country, like Columbia, have uh, basically been shut down um, prematurely. Uh, the irony here, if you really think about it, is that um, these students were really ramping up their protesting in late April because they wanted to get the last bit of it in before they had to go home for summer vacation. And of course, they could riot on an empty campus. We know that most college campuses are basically ghost towns um, during the summer, but they chose to get it in while they can still get the attention. But the irony is that they just hastened the arrival of the summer vacation style shutdown by doing so. At Columbia, for example, it was announced that all classes uh, will be held over Zoom for the rest of the school year. So once again, in 2020, when you were paying $70,000 a year at Ivy League universities um, to uh, just watch you know, meetings on your smartphone on Zoom or on your laptop with 12 other tabs open, but you really, really weren't actually participating in these meetings, your camera and um, well, microphone were off for the whole time, but uh, you were still paying... Uh, $70,000 a year, once again, to not listen to these classes um, while you were distracted by all the other things on your laptop. Well, we've gone back to those conditions. But whereas in 2020, um, people had to do that uh, because of a virus, which we're not even still allowed to mention on YouTube uh, because of the seriousness of the situation of talking about life or death implications of it. Um, this is um, returned now uh, simply because um, the protesters uh, refuse to leave their tents but still want full attendance. Uh, that is right. Uh, the reason why Columbia has gone back to 2020-style Zoom um, meeting classes only is that um, they don't want to offend the protesters who want to get full attendance while staying on their smartphone in their tent on campus, uh, where they were told by police, I believe, to leave nine days ago. But how did we end up in this situation where um, not just at Columbia they've hastened the arrival of the campus shutting down, but also in USC, the University of Southern California has actually canceled its graduation ceremony and canceled the speech of its valedictorian because, if I understand correctly, the valedictorian was going to use that also as an opportunity to protest, um, basically hijack the commencement ceremony by making it political when it was not really supposed to be, if you believe the way that it was reported by the media. But you can see the um, almost accelerationist pressure is really getting ramped up here to the point that um, students are okay with shutting down their campuses even for something as important as their commencement ceremony, which now is not going to happen. Um, I guess they can hold that over Zoom also, which will totally be exactly the same if we have fond memories of doing stuff like that in 2020. Um, they're really ramping up the pressure because of their concern, they tell us, for the war, which for all of their efforts seems to be going on just the same, despite all of this. Um, the Senate still approved what, $95 billion in more foreign aid for just the handful of nations that are actively engaged in war. Yes, that does include Ukraine, but it also includes, of course, Israel. So this protest against the war seems for all of its um, attention that it has received um, to have not made any difference with regard to the waging of the war itself. You still have escalation with Iran, despite the fact that the media is trying to downplay that. Iran, for example, shot a bunch of missiles into Israel, which it knew were going to get shot down, with the exception, according to some reports, of um, some that they knew couldn't be shot down, which they did end up hitting a location um, as a warning, saying if we really need to, have a real attack in the future, we can. The response by Israel um, was to strike um, the area that contains their scientific um, facilities researching for their nuclear program, which is a pretty big deal. So in reality, of course, the war is escalating almost in a textbook style to the point of reaching nuclear levels. So these protests haven't changed a damn thing with regard to that, but they're still getting an enormous amount of pressure for reasons which I think um, we have to talk about in this video, and which can only really be understood if you know something about how stories are told in the popular 
format. So back in 2018, when I first brought back this channel, um, I actually did so, I'll admit now, uh, because I had decided at that time that I was going to be a writer, self-published, and not originally intending to do philosophy books as I ended up doing. I was originally planning on doing a, a philosophy novel, basically, kind of like Dune or something like that, like a science fiction novel warning about the dangers of like Kurzweil style technologization, but in a format which I still thought at that time had to be kind of like a uh, mass paperback science fiction novel that you might find at like a drugstore or something like that. So I read a lot of books at that time about how to write for popular audiences. I went to the uh, public library there in Oklahoma City and actually went to the you know creative writing section and checked out every book they had on how to write a novel. And one of the things I remember being emphasized at that time is if you look at the formula for how like Hollywood movies are narrated, okay, like the kind of genre of popular entertainment which anybody could follow um one of the things that you have to do it's like a structural requirement for hollywood style films is you have to have a moment in the film when it seems 100 percent certain that the hero is not going to succeed it seems that the big boss has gotten so powerful there's a challenge which rashly you can't even imagine how the hero is going to get out of it and then of course you have to write some way for the hero to still overcome it despite insurmountable odds, and that's what builds up the sort of catharsis required for Hollywood-style films. Um, but uh, this is exactly, I think, what you find transferred over to the realm of politics now. I've mentioned in my recent video on Jacques Ellul and um, a Technological Society's chapter on state and technique that um, it's actually something of an anachronism to think that politics today revolves around the so-called men of genius that really did dominate in the era of, say, Machiavelli. Machiavelli had to write the prince to give advice to human rulers about how they could use things like wit, charisma, and intelligence planning social manipulation to maintain their power at a time when it was not at all guaranteed. The prince could easily lose that power at any moment, at a time when Europe was basically at war constantly for thousands of years, but that's all totally out of date today. Um, we have this anachronistic belief that politics is still really dominated by men of genius who have to be like Machiavellian in their, um, in their uh, intelligence with regard to manipulating the... Um, situations that they find themselves in, but that's all grotesquely outdated when you realize that everything that happens in politics today is simply a result of the global technological system doing what was favorable to it on Darwinist grounds at that moment. The best thing which human politicians can do is they might accord with it. They might get on the right side of history by doing or favoring the things which the global technological system was going to do anyway. Like favoring 68 genders at a time when the global technological system really can't have half the population be male and half the population be female. It needs all of the population to be exactly the same, even if it uses the illusion of 68 genders to promote really a genderless society. So the politicians might at best accord with something the technological system was already going to do, but they certainly can't cause it. They can't be the efficient cause that makes these things happen. So we have a situation in which, in reality, the human politicians are just symbolic figureheads, even to the point that we have a president now who is nothing except the symbol. I mean, he's the symbol of um, an enlightened uh, believer in democracy who favors 68 genders and wants to harshly punish anyone in favor of insurrection. But in reality, he's not even capable of finding his way off the stage when he has to go up there for some photo op with some world leaders. The prime minister of other nations always have to escort him off the stage, even if it's fairly obvious how to get, like, even um, a, a lower intelligence animal would easily be able to find the exit. Well, the president of the United States' brain has deteriorated to the point now where he, he can't even do that. Um, so we have a president who's actually incapable of doing anything at this point, except perhaps putting a signature um, onto a trillion star large spending bill. But we still have to maintain this illusion that he's not just as powerful as any other president in history, even going back to the times when the Machiavellian man of genius was still sort of a thing in American politics. No, he's actually more powerful than 
any of them. He's powerful enough to control the weather. If you just pass the Green New Deal, he can stop global warming, despite the fact that um, I can't stop the rain has long been a cliche um, or a metaphor literally referring to um, something which is impossible. I can't stop the rain any more than I can change another um, situation that is beyond my control. Well, we have a president now who actually does claim that he can stop the rain so long as you just give more tax dollars to incentivize people to buy EVs. Even if those EVs end up catching fire in their garages, as the fire department was called to a house there in suburban Denver just a few months ago. I saw it on the news all the way here in India because that EV had caught fire, perhaps while it was charging in their house. I'm not exactly 100% sure of the circumstances, but I know that that did happen. But at any rate, we have a president who claims... Um, to be so much more powerful than any other president in the past that uh, he can not only change the weather, but he can also stop recessions from happening even after the world's leading economists claim that one's going to show up. Remember the um, much-anticipated recession of 2023, which never actually happened? Well, um, the reason it never happened, despite the fact that, like the um, you know uh, science fiction or Hollywood-style story, Big Boss seeming insurmountably powerful and then somehow still being overcome by the hero, the recession, which they predicted was certainly going to happen, um, was avoided not because Biden is so much more intelligent um, or powerful than it, but rather because the um, Fed already knew beforehand that it had a way to get out of it, which was just to ramp up their gov funny money government spending to levels before not seen except in the case of like world wars in American history for the long term. You never had government spending or borrowing so out of proportion to the GDP itself, so much larger than total GDP, unless you were like literally in World War II, okay, and um, um, doing what you had to in an actual emergency situation um, for the sake of um, giving yourself the ability after the war to dig yourself back out of the hole that you had to dig yourself in to get through a major war on multiple fronts as we did. Well, we, it's interesting that now we have that level of government spending and borrowing out of proportion to GDP, but without the world war. At least America's not literally directly involved in it, but they're still spending as though they are. Well, this is really just playing into the um, Hollywood-style storytelling in which the recession of 2023 was the big boss seeming instrumentally powerful and Biden seeming like he was certainly going to be overwhelmed by it, only to find that in a pre-scripted manner they already knew how he was going to get out of it, which was, of course, to ramp up government spending to the point that um, the inflation you think is so bad now is going to be far worse in the future when you have to pay for this $35 trillion and counting of debt. Well, is it really the same thing with these protests, to bring this back to our main theme? We have um, leading Democrat um, voices like Michael Moore saying that this is proof that Biden is finished for his 2024 election. It's not Republicans, okay, who are going to uh, end the Biden presidency at one term. No, it's Democrats, according to Michael Moore, who are troubled by what they see over there in Gaza. And these Democrats that we now see on college campuses, so angry, in fact, that on um, the campus of Yale, it was reported that a woman was stabbed in the eye by a pro-Palestine protester with their Palestinian flag simply because she was alleged by um, someone in the crowd to be associated with Israel. Maybe she's an Israeli-American or whatever. It doesn't even matter if the allegation is true. Supposedly, it has reached the boiling point now where on an Ivy League campus, you could be stabbed in the eye simply for being associated with the wrong country. And it's, once again, not um, Trump supporters doing this. It's rather people on the far left, if you believe the media, reporting. And people like Michael Moore will try to explain this away as evidence that Biden already knows that he has lost the 2024 election, not because people are going to switch over to voting for Trump, but rather because in states like Michigan, enough people will simply stay home that the same thing that happened in 2016 with people who didn't bother to vote for Clinton in that state where, what, 100,000 people left the presidential slot blank even though they voted on the other things down ballot. Uh, Michael Moore is telling us that that's going to happen this year, and Biden already knows it. James Carville, another Democrat um, strategist who was famous for the quote in the 1992 election with Bill Clinton, it's the economy, stupid, that guy from Louisiana, um, has also said that if Biden loses this year, it's going to be because of 
Israel and Palestine. So we have the, um, the insurmountable big boss building up, which is Biden's inability to please both sides, as the two-state solution uh, has humorously been called Michigan and Pennsylvania. Too many pro-Palestine voters in Michigan, too many pro-Israel uh, voters in Pennsylvania. Biden can't please both of them. That, rather than any positive attribute by Trump, will guarantee, if we listen to the hyperbolic statements of Michael Moore and James Carville, um, his defeat this November. Well, we all know what's really going on here. This is just the Hollywood movie-style narration technique of building up that big boss so big, okay, um, that it will seem impossible for anyone to overcome it, only to find in November, after the vote counting has been paused for five days, of course, that virtually every state will somehow go Blue, and we will realize at that moment that this man who isn't even capable of finding his way off the stage, who actually has no freaking idea where he is most of the time, was so much more powerful than any other president in past history that not only did he avert the recession of 2023, which seemed inevitable, not only did he, um, um, did he escape the fate of a humiliating midterm defeat in 2022, where also, it took about a few days for them to count all the votes in Arizona, Nevada, and other states, but um, he's going to be so powerful that after giving, being given an extra five days to count all the votes in the 50 states of the United States, somehow he will overcome that challenge too, despite the fact that the media is reporting now that in all of the battleground states, Trump is slightly or significantly ahead, seven points ahead in Arizona, despite the fact that we all know it's absolutely impossible for him to actually win that and these other battleground states. So if you um, think of it from that angle, you'll realize that these protests actually aren't as significant as they seem to be. They're just part of the reality TV show scripting that will make it seem that someone who is incapable of doing anything is actually the most powerful man in the world, the most powerful man in history, in much the same way that the average technophile consumer today mistakenly thinks that the fact that their smartphone is capable of connecting to the entire world and sort of entertaining them endlessly is proof that they've become so much smarter than all of the past generations. People mistakenly think that because they're surrounded by super complicated technologies, that makes them smarter than all of those primitive peoples from the past who were doing things like farming and blacksmithing, when in reality their smartphone has actually deteriorated their attention span to the fact, point that they can't learn anything, and it has deteriorated their other thinking abilities to the point that it's not an exaggeration to say that uh, the average smartphone user in 2024 is actually less intelligent than any other people within history. They've actually become the least intelligent, least capable of thinking of all people in world history, despite seeming on grounds of transitively believing that all of the complication of modern technology was somehow created by their own minds, thinking that that makes them the smartest people. It's actually the exact opposite. And isn't that a macrocosm for what Biden himself has become? The most powerful man in history is actually the least powerful.